Hi, it's Bumble. Welcome back to my channel. I was just kind of messing with my um, the vocal filter thing I used, and I found a thing that reduced noise, but it got rid of me being able to hear myself, and I thought, oh, maybe that'll make them understand me better. I ended up taking it off because I'm so used to hearing myself as I talk. I don't know. I feel like it almost helps me a little bit. Anyway, um, taking a break from my homework right now to talk more about the Beatles because I just finished the last technically three, I don't know if you want to count Yellow Submarine albums, and I wanted to talk about them while well, they're fresh in my head. So yeah, we left off, yeah, with these two. Um, so far, uh, Sgt. Pepper is still my favorite out of everything, but there's another one I'll talk about later that's a close second, and with that one, Magical Mystery Tour, it's like, they all have this very, like, upbeat, kind of whimsical at times quality I really liked. And then, uh, the White Album, which is this one, uh, was a lot more chill. And I was really looking forward to this one, because I'd heard a lot of the songs in it before. And I was like, yeah, this has some good ones, it's more mellow, it's got a certain vibe to it. But I was kind of disappointed. I mean, as you can see, there's still a ton of songs I ended up saving that I really liked. But I thought there's going to be more that I liked. But anyway, going off of this, um, the ones I liked, I'll talk about that. Uh, Glass Onion, I, it's one of those I didn't really know that well. Like, I knew about it because, you know, it's used in the movie Glass Onion, which is on Netflix. Which is a movie I was, I wasn't hyped about, but I thought, you know what? It's another Knives Out movie, why not? I'll go see it, but it was kind of disappointing. Uh, I'd recommend not watching it. Anyway, uh, but the song, though, the song is good. And what I like about the song, oh, I can't pull up the lyrics unless I play it, huh? But, um. There's lyrics that reference, like, directly other Beatles songs, which I think is cool, where they'll be like, oh, we told you about, um, I don't know, like, The Fool on the Hill, or Lady Madonna, or about the Strawberry Fields, or whatever, and I think this is one of the only songs where it does that, where it, like, directly references other ones, and I thought that was pretty cool, because it, like, still feels like a natural part of the lyrics or anything. Um, yeah, this one's really good. It's very catchy. I like it. It's another one of the upbeat ones. Uh, well, my guitar gently weeps. It's like kind of, I don't want to say it's sad sounding. It's more gentle. I do like the guitar in it, though. I think it's really cool. Uh, Martha, my dear, is actually one of my favorites. I think, yeah, Martha, my dear, and Honey Pie are still probably my favorites on the whole album, but especially Martha, my dear. Those two in particular, I listened to a lot last semester. When I was trying to get through all my finals and stuff, I had those on repeat, like, all the time. It was kind of how I was really more, um, introduced to the White Album, really. But yeah, this one's really cool. I just really like the vocals on it and everything, and, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of anything else, like, go through the song in my head. Because you'd think from the title that it would be about a woman, but I looked it up a while ago, and I think it's actually supposed to be about a dog, which I find really funny. Uh, but I mean the lyrics do kind of reflect that a little bit, like the lyrics. Okay, I gotta just pull it up now. Can I pull up the lyric? No. Nope. Yeah, hold your head up, you silly girl. Like, that wouldn't refer to a person, right? That'd have to refer to, like, a dog or something. But it's still like, kind of sweet and, like, one of those kind of, like, silly, sweet, I guess, quote-unquote love songs. Uh, but I just like the way it sounds very, it sounds very bouncy and playful. I really like that. Blackbird kind of goes back to like being more chill. It's one of those like chill guitar songs, but I like it. I, I like the ones where it's really chill, but it's like it doesn't end up sad or anything. Like it's very mellow, but not where it's going to make me depressed or something. Rocky Raccoon, with that one, um, like, I knew the title of it, but I hadn't heard the song before. Hold on, I gotta listen to it for like a few seconds. Oh, it's this one. So the thing is, this one starts out pretty chill. With that guitar and everything. Um, almost feels slightly folksy in a way. And then you get to this part about the doctor. Wait, is that the doctor came.
No, never mind. I'm thinking of a different part of a song. It's it's chill. Sounds very folksy because of the guitar. I like it. Wish I'd heard it sooner. Uh, I will. What is this one? I don't know. Who knows how? Oh, okay. Now I know. It's one of those also mellow love songs. Gives me the same vibes as um, like Till There Was Me, for example, or If I Fell. And I really like that. I kind of miss that because I feel like as you go through more and more of their dis discography, I always feel like I'm messing up that word. Like I know how to spell it, but like my mouth just doesn't. I feel like as you go more and more through their albums, you get less of those kind of songs and less of that sound. So I like that they have more of those back, like with this one. Uh, Mother's Nature's song is kind of like Rocky Raccoon, but it's one of those like chill guitar ones. I don't know, I thought it was so relaxing. I put it on my um, Relax Just Be a Human playlist. Uh, Sexy Sadie's also cool. You'd think from the title that it would be this very loud and whatever song, but no, it's just really good. Uh, I'm going to skip Honey Pie for just a second. I want to talk about Good Night. Good Night is um, kind of has the same vibes as like Sun King, which I haven't talked about yet. Um, it's, it's one of those almost like, okay, if you remember from the Billy Joel thing, I mentioned about a song, uh, like Through the Long Night, for example, it's kind of similar to that, where it's like, um, hold on, let me go back down, uh, where it's like a relaxing, almost kind of lullaby, you know, they're singing about, like, good night sleep tight i'm getting them both kind of mixed in my head um and yeah very wholesome with the lyrics like that one but also very gentle you could like sleep to this one i, d I don't mean like you're gonna fall asleep because it's bored but like it's relaxing mm -hmm. yeah so i put it on that playlist um no i actually i think i put it on my uh sleepy time playlist but yeah i like that one very relaxing i think it was on the end of this album let me check uh, yeah, yeah, it's on the end of the album, which is cool. I'll talk about the album in a second, because there's, like, other songs I want to talk about that I ended up just putting in different categories and not here. Honey Pie, I really like that one. Um, I don't know what the exact genre is, but it has this, like, I don't know, like, 1920s, early 1900s, maybe, kind of sound to it. Very, I almost want to say retro, but I wouldn't even associate retro with that far back. Um, uh, hold on a second, I gotta pause. I gotta text, I need to let my mom know about real quick. BRB. Alrighty, I'm back. So where was I? Oh, yeah, Honey Pie has this um, very vintage, I think vintage... Because when I think of the word retro, I think of like, I don't know, like the 50s or the 80s, but vintage, I think of like older than that. So I think that's the right sound, um, or right word. It's like if you go on Wikipedia, it lists like the specific genre they're referencing to, but I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, though, I like it. I think it sounds cool. Um, and I mean, the lyrics kind of reflect that too, like talking about the silver screen, and it's basically about this guy who's in love with this woman who... I think he's an actress or something, but they have a long distance relationship and he just wants her to come to him so they could like be together more and stuff. Um, but I just really like the sound of this one a lot. Uh, something else I want to mention with Martha My Dear, it starts out like the intro is just a piano. Da -da 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 -da. And I just really like the way that sounds a lot. Okay, uh, I'm going to take the phone again real quick. I don't know why I keep getting family messages, like sometimes um, my family borrows my phone to do stuff because I don't call people, so I have like a ton of minutes on my phone because I just, that's the magic of Discord, baby. Alright, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so this is actually pretty long. I didn't like s sit through the whole album, I think. I think, no, no, I did. I was on that uh, Beatles All Album playlist or whatever. Um, 
So yeah, there's a ton of songs in here. I mean, there's ones that I liked, but not enough to put on here. Uh, like back in, in the USSR. Dear Prudence, I think I ended up putting on my, um, pedal playlist. Uh, I didn't like Wild Honey Pie. It was kind of annoying to me. I did really like the continuing story of Bungalow Bill. That one was really good, but I don't know why I didn't put it on the other playlist. Uh, I'm so tired, it's kind of depressing. I sort of liked a little bit of Piggies and Pilgrim, and same with Happiness is a Warm Gun. If it's like once I'm iffy on, then it's like, I don't want to add it on. Uh, don't Pass Me By, I don't remember what that sounded like. Uh, Birthday was very loud and aggressive. I know I just skipped over some. Thought I'd like the blues one, but mm -mm. Cry Baby Cry was like kind of interesting, but and then the rest is kind of whatever. And then with these two, I gotta talk about with Why Don't You Toot in the Road. This is probably the weirdest one I've seen um, because it's literally just. The lyrics are just, why don't we do it in the road? And the singer just keeps asking that over and over and over again, except for like one other lyric line that's different. But I'm like, why is this even a thing, honestly? And then with Julia, I really like this one. I ended up putting it in my relaxing playlist. It's not just because, okay, like I'm not named after the song, but I shared the name with the song. I don't know, my dad just likes the name Julia. So, I mean, I've always kind of felt a little connected to the song because of that. But also because it's just a really chill song. I think it's really pretty. I like the lyrics about like the ocean and the seashells and stuff. I just, I think it's nice. Very chill. I don't know why my voice is kind of leaving me right now. I haven't even like been recording. This is literally the first thing I'm recording today. I have other things I want to record, but I'll do that later. Because I finally finished, um the plot part of my Mickey review. Took me forever to write that thing. Okay, anyway, we have Yellow Submarine next, which sort of isn't really an album. I think it's just like a collection of songs from the movie Yellow Submarine, which I've heard is very trippy and colorful, and I want to watch it, but I don't know. Maybe I'll pester a friend to watch it with me at some point. Uh, Yellow Submarine from Yellow Submarine. That one's a classic. I think everyone knows that one. And then All You Need Is Love is also really good. I just would have thought, it, the way it sounds, it feels like it would have been on one of the older albums. So I was surprised to see it on here. Now the thing I want to mention specifically with Yellow Submarine is that you see all these songs that by George Martin with the like sea of whatever, whatever. I think those might be like specifically made from the movie. They're really interesting because I didn't listen to all of them, but I listened at least to Sea of Time and Pepperland. They're all instrumentals. It's really weird. I don't know how I feel about them because it's like some parts of them I really, really like and others I'm just kind of like, eh, so I got bored after a while. Maybe I'll listen to them all, like, like if I talk about the movie or something. Um, so yeah, that wasn't really an album. I kind of skipped through that. Their next actual album is Abbey Road, which got, you know, the iconic Abbey Road Road with them there and whatever. That one I actually really liked. I'd say, like, ranking these wise, it would probably be, for me, Sgt. Pepper's, and then probably Abbey Road. It's just really good. I just kept finding all these songs that I liked. The thing is, I was like, yeah, it was banger after banger and whatever. And then as I kind of got more down to around, like, after Sunken, I was just kind of like, eh, like, still good, but wasn't as into it as much. Um, so I'll talk about these. Uh, Come Together is really good. I like that one a lot. Um, something's kind of more mellow and chill. Feels like something I'd have, like, I don't know, if I was eating dinner and I'm listening to it or something. Uh, Maxwell Silver Hammer is just really goofy. I like this one. It's so weird because it sounds so upbeat, but it's literally a song about this guy going around killing people, with, like literally smacking them with a hammer. And it's supposed to have a sound effect for the hammer that just kind of sounds like a metal pipe hitting something. But it sounds so goofy and I can't take it seriously <laughs> because of that one meme that's going around with like the metal pipe sounds. Especially um, this one video I listened to was like 
I think Buddy Holly by Weezer, but every time there's a key change, there's a metal pipe sound. And at first it sounds really good, because they're like kind of evenly spaced out, and then it gets to a point where there's so many key changes, it's like you're constantly hearing the metal pipe. It's so weird. Um, but yeah, this one's like silly musically, but not lyrically, but very just about food overall. I like it a lot. Oh, Darling is also good, but my favorite part of it is the intro, because they're like, oh, darling, like, like they really extend the notes in the intro, and it just sounds really cool. Uh, Here Comes the Sun is also a favorite of mine. Uh, it's always been, um, it's just like, really chill, I don't know how to, not the same kind of chill as the other ones, though, it's kind of its own thing. The thing is, this song's slightly ruined for me because I always associate it with the B-movie because it's in that scene in the B-movie where Barry has to take the airplane. No, no, not the airplane, I'm sorry. It's the scene where Barry finally gets to join the pollen jocks and they have to go around and put pollen on the flowers and, like, bring all the wildlife back to life and whatever. And I mean, it does, it does fit with the movie, but that's just kind of where my brain goes when I hear this song, but... Outside of B-movie, this song is really good, uh, because it kind of has the same vibe with something where it's like very chill, relaxed. Uh, it kind of makes me feel like if I'm like laying outside or something and I kind of, you know that feeling you look up at the sky and you're like, this thing's endless and massive and you just feel so small, not in like a hopeless way. Like, oh, I'm just a tiny little human, I don't matter. But more in a way of, like, wow, the universe is huge, and there's so much we don't understand, and it just exists, and kind of just, kind of blows your mind. That's kind of the feeling I get from this song. Uh, you never give me money. I don't remember what this sounds like. I'm going to Okay. Okay. I, I like that piano anyway, at the beginning, because with this one, it's like, it's very like, it's very mellow and everything, until, and this is the part I was trying to think of earlier, um, you get to this part of the, out of college, no new start, see no future, pay no rent, money's gone, where'd it go? It's like, it goes in a completely different direction, and the mellowness is just gone. I mean, I think it also changes singers to that point, but that little kind of juxtaposition there going in a different direction, I like that a lot, too. And then it just goes, hold on. I think somewhere around here, it goes back to being mellow again. And it's just interesting, because it's... You know, you look at the lyrics, and then over here, where it's... What am I trying to analyze here? Like, it's sort of kind of sad sounding, and then you get here, and the tone completely changes. Like, musically, it's more alive, I guess, but then the lyrics are just kind of depressing. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, and then we got Sun King. I like that one. I mentioned it earlier. It's very, lo it's probably the most relaxing Beatles song, in my opinion. I find it more relaxing even more than Good Night, which is kind of, Good Night has like lullaby vibes, but Sun King just makes me feel like I'm zoned out on somebody's couch, and I don't have the ability to get up, I'm just kind of there existing, but like in a good way, you know, I added it to my relaxing playlist. Golden Slumbers. Okay, once there's a way to get back home. I like it. It's chill. Yeah, it's just chill, not really relaxing. I mean, it starts out a little bit relaxing, and then uh, you get to the... Um, no, no. Okay, here's the thing with Golden Slumbers. Both Golden Slumbers and Carry That Weight are both, like, a minute and a half long, and I think the reason why is because I get these songs so mixed up with each other. Though I'm more familiar with Carry That Weight, um, because they kind of go into each other a bit, like Golden Slumbers ends, and then 
the same melody continues to carry that weight, even literally, because it ends as like that. And I will And then it just continues from there, and then the lyrics start with the whole, um, try to carry that weight. It makes it sound like one song, and they do it seamlessly. I think that's great, and that's why I'd add them both on here. But they're both good, like, individually, but together, it's basically just one song. I like that. Okay, and then the last one is technically Let It Be. I mean, there's these, but, like, these were, you know, released, like, after they split up, and it's, like, you know, it's one of those albums where it's, like, oh, it's the best ofs and stuff. So it's, like, you know, all the songs, there's no more new songs after this, pretty much. Um, and this is the one where they did that, like, five-hour... Beatles documentary on Disney Plus. I saw like bits and pieces because my dad ended up watching the whole thing. I probably could have watched the whole thing too. I'm sure it was very interesting. I, I mean, I can't talk because I don't have Disney Plus, but yeah. Um, but I did get to see the rooftop performance at the end, which was the first time I heard Dig a Pony. I'll talk about it in, in a second. Um, wait, what's too much? I ain't Dig a Pygmy! Oh yeah, it has that intro, and then it goes here. Uh... Run away. Okay, now I have to check. Run away. Oh, okay, yeah. Kinda... The guitar feels very folksy again. I mean, I guess it's just because it's an acoustic guitar. This is the right word, right? Where it's just like a regular tar, not guitar, not an electric guitar. Um, run away home. It feels like something that'd be in, um, like a commercial. Or like you're on a road trip and you're going home and that kind of thing. It's very upbeat and very catchy too. Not as catchy as the others, but like still pretty. Yeah. Okay, I think Dig a Pony. There's a lot of songs in here I like, but I think Dig a Pony is my favorite. There's just something about seeing them, I guess, perform it live. I mean, for me, it's footage. Not like I could have been there live. You know, the rooftop concert and everything during their last one and. That being my introduction to Dig a Pony, I think that helped. That's just really good. I'm surprised. Like, let me pull up the lyrics real quick. Like, the lyrics kind of just make no sense because I was trying to read them. Because the song feels so, I don't want to say emotional, but like, I don't know how to describe this song. I just really like it. Like, it makes it sound like they're singing about something really important from the way they're singing. And then you go to look at the lyrics, and I'm like, what does I Pick a Moon Dog even mean? You know, like, I don't know. And then does this thing where to, like, repeat lines a few times? It's interesting. I don't know, maybe I just need to, like, go look up one of those, like, lyric analysis things, because I don't get it. It just, it's interesting, it's kind of got, I don't want to say the lyrics are silly, but like, yeah. Oh, uh, it's a very good song, I like it a lot. Across the Universe, that one's a classic. Uh, it's very slow and kind of one of those that makes you feel a bit slowed down a little. Um, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it either. Uh, I Mean Mine is also very good, I want to pull up the lyrics again. Because it, it sort of feels very different at different points. It's like, you have like the, oh, the It's like very slow, kind of back and forth a little bit. And then you have um, the, everyone sang on the faith and wine. We're kind of, it still has that little back and forth, but it's more, not aggressive, but like, um, I don't know, the vocals feel stronger, and then it kind of just goes back and forth, um, but I really like it, it's good. And then Let It Be, I feel kind of mixed on Let It Be, it, it's kind of similar to yesterday, where it's like, it's supposed to be really emotional, you got that piano, and, you know, it has a certain reputation, but both of those songs feel kind of slightly depressing to me, I don't know if they're supposed to be, I really like went through the lyrics, but it's like those kind of like slow piano, slow sad piano song kind of things, but it's very pretty, I like it, um, 
But after 909, it's like it starts being upbeat again. Uh, if anything, it actually, uh, one after 909 feels a lot like, um, remember how with the first two albums, uh, Please Please Me and with the Beatles, I said, because those were made in the early 60s, like 1963, and I don't remember for the other one, um, they had a very, like, clearly 50s, uh, sound to them. Yeah, that's what, um, one after 909 feels like, like, honestly, if that one was released on one of those albums, I think it would have fit in perfectly, but I do really like it, it's very catchy. Uh, the Long and Winding Road, it kind of gets back to being like, very mellow, and it feels like a road trip song too, but like, it's more of a, kind of, yeah, I guess not road trip, but like, music listening, that kind of vibe. Instrumentally especially, I don't know how to explain it. And then you have Get Back. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those, it goes back to being upbeat again. Um, it gets stuck in my head sometimes. One of those kind of songs. A lot of people know this one. Alright. And then there's Past Masters, which the album actually, like with these that I put on here, these are the only ones that are on the playlist from these albums, I think. For some reason, they didn't have everything in Past Masters. Like, I don't even know what this one is. I don't recognize some of these titles. So I guess, um, I haven't listened to everything technically, but that's okay. Maybe I'll get to them eventually. Um, but anyway, uh, Don't Let Me Down is a good one. I was just surprised because I thought that that was a song on Let It Be, but it was- oh. Wait, no, the album I mean. I thought it was a song that was on here, and it's not, but it feels like it really should be, so it's weird. Um, but I can see why that one is after this. It has the same sound as, um, I don't know, like, I Need Mine or, uh, Dig a Pony. Um, and I remember it in the Rooftop concert, they had this one too, so I don't know. I don't know why it's not on the album. Anyway, then you have one, which I was kind of surprised seeing these, because as I was listening to all these albums, I'm like, wait a minute, where's stuff like Paperback Writer, Lady Madonna? I'm like, I know these songs, I listen to a lot of these, go I listen to these a lot, I'm sorry, um, growing up, why aren't they on any of the albums? I, I don't know why, because I knew that this album existed, the one album, I've seen the cover for it before, like, when listening to it on, uh, Amazon Music sometimes, um, so I'm like, where are these songs? I thought this was an older album, so I was like, why hasn't it popped up yet? But nah, it's from 2000, so, and it's another one of those, it's like a collection of, um, older songs, as you can tell from the titles, but then, like, where were some of these earlier, you know? Just kind of threw me off. But anyway, Lady Madonna's very good. It almost has a similar vibe to me as, um, Hello Goodbye. The same kind of, like, upbeatness. But I like it. It's cool. Uh, Paperback Writer is also pretty good. And I was kind of surprised with the Ballad of John and Yoko, because I thought, you know, like, with ballads, they're usually, like, you think of a ballad, you think of something that's, like, very slow and mellow. But no, with this one, it's not, it still has the same vibes as the other one. Yeah, all four of these are all, like, very upbeat, and, you know, they're very recognizable, too, and then we can work it out. I, I'm kind of just running out of less and less things to say, but I'm just, after a while, I'm like, oh, it's upbeat, it's chill, it's mellow, it's kind of sad sounding, or whatever, it's, it's just like, you know, a lot of these songs are really well known, and it's, I feel like there's only so much I could say. It's kind of, it's not like with, um, like with Billy Joel, where there was, like, a little bit more of a variety. And I was like, oh, it's like this, or this, or whatever, you know, I had a whole freaking thing to say about the stranger, basically. <laughs> but despite that, you know, I still really like the Beatles, and it still surprises me that they were together for less than a decade, and still had all this music. And just the fact that, uh, the White Album had, like, 30 songs still is just kind of like, damn, dude. But a lot of classic songs, I mean, not everything's a banger or a bop. 
there was like plenty of things and you could tell like if you go to look from like finalists compared to the actual album for example of just like oh there's a lot she didn't really care about or ones that I felt like kind of iffy on but as you could see a lot of classics a lot of really good songs um so yeah like I said Sgt. Peppers and um Abbey Road were my favorites but um Magical Mystery Tour was also good, and the White Album has, like, a lot of classics on there. Uh, like, even the first two, three, four albums, um, like, didn't really have that sound. But, you know, the, the sound and whatever, um, but they're still good. None of these were bad. I recommend, like, even though I have my favorites, and there's a lot I didn't, wasn't really for me, nothing was bad, um, and I'd recommend any of these. But yeah, that's my Beatles list. I don't really want to go back and listen to all of the past masters because there's a lot on there. So next, uh, I'm probably going to go through my core playlist and refresh myself because I don't remember what some of these sound like. I don't know when I'll get to that. Maybe like today after this. Um, and then after core play, I want to go through... Elton John, I, I'm kind of hesitant because, uh, as you can see, 40 hours <laughs> compared to everything else, it's going to take me a long time, but I've at least already listened to, um, I've listened to all of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, so I have a lot of thoughts on that already, and I want to get to ABBA, ABBA's probably the shortest out of all of these, there's a lot of really good songs, um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on all the Beatles albums. And thanks for watching.